Okay. Hi, my name is Ron Lehman from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the world. All right, tonight we're going to show you a traditional line-based polished plaster called Grisello. And uh, what we've done to get started is base coated the surface with the uh, quartz based primer. Quartz primer is uh, water based, cleans up the soap, I'm sorry, it's, the, it's acrylic product, cleans up the soap and water, interior, exterior, tints with pigment, never paint. If you put paint into it, you'll destroy the product and won't last. And you need to use a lime compatible pigment. Uh, let's see, what else? I rolled it on, this is with a half inch nap roller. You don't want to roll it on too thick because it creates a roller texture and nap and that'll telegraph through your plaster finish. You don't want that to happen. It just makes more work for you in the end. So take it and roll it nice and even. Uh, dilute it 10% with water when you get it because it is pretty thick, like a peanut butter consistency. And that's pretty much it. We're going to work over a white base because tonight we're going to create this uh, roller color. But this isn't quite finished yet. This is one of the steps in the process to get to the final product or final look. Let's see about the product. Tools, we're gonna to need a couple things here this evening. Um, these are our putty knives, our spatulas. These are from Pavon. We have various sizes for various sized walls, right? High quality stainless steel. I know what somebody's gonna say, that looks like a putty knife. Yes and no. Um, these are considerably more, it's a higher quality product because of the stainless steel in this. This is not blue steel. These will never rust, uh, but they will leave carbon deposits on uh, soft colors. So if you're using white, pastels, light colors, make sure you use plastic. Same with the trial. For this one we use tonight, the Pavon. This is the little guy. Um, again, stainless steel. Got a nice bevel on it. The actual bevel is so sharp. Can you see it? This will cut better than any knife in my kitchen because every time you use it, you're constantly working on the side. And, uh, oops, hold on a second. Sorry about that. Um, so the more you use it, the sharper it gets. Be really, really careful. That's why down below me, I have a bucket with a scrub brush. So in between anything that I'm doing, I'm constantly cleaning this. Because I don't want this material to get hard on here. If it gets hard on here, and you start scraping, digging, and doing whatever you got to do, or sandpaper, you're going to put scratches on here. And those little scratches will show here. So I think we're, let's see. So the Grisello product is coming from Fermilux down in the, what do you call that place, somewhere out of Florida. There we go. Oh, backwards. But. <laughs> All right, that's it. And it's tinted this super dark red. Have them tint it. And uh, what's it? Tony down there is fantastic. You send him a, what do you call it? Paint chip from your local paint store. And he will tint it to match and their turnaround time is fantastic they get it to you pretty quickly you make that they send you a dry sample so you know what uh, you're looking at and then uh, go ahead and put it on the wall all right so now this is tinted like i said they tinted it at the factory at the store for me uh and they use lime compatible tints Grisello, you can use inside or outside of your home it's water resistant not waterproof meaning uh if you spill water splash something against it'll bubble up push off but it won't repel water. It's not like Tadalock. You can't put it in your shower. All right. So that being said, uh, let's see. Cleans up soap and water, interior, exterior, lime compatible pigments. Uh, when you tint this on your own, always make dry samples because this will dry 40% lighter than when it's wet. You're going to see that as we get going. So let's get a little bit on the trowel. Now, when I load the trowel, I uh, don't start with a lot. Is it like skimming walls with joint compound? A little junk in there. Okay. A little bit goes a long way. We're going to start with that much. And I always put it there on the top because as we work across the surface, it's going to spread out across the trough. So if this is my ceiling, I'm going to come across my ceiling line, come down. Go even on micro thin, right? We want this thin as glass. Don't worry if that pokes through. It's not going to hurt anything. It will disappear in the next coat. This is typically done in three applications. You'll see I'm starting from the wet and I pull to the dry. When I put it on, see how it's all spread out all over the place? That's why. Put it back here. Um, put that there. 
there for a minute. So when I'm working, the trowel is almost flat. So it slides across the surface and off the trowel. And then when I come back, my, I think this we call it the gather up, pull the other part. It's pretty high up on the blade. Do I need quartz primer if I have orange peel and latex? Yes. That's because the lime and the plaster is not compatible with those products. Um, and some people will tell you, don't worry about it, you get away with it. Um, somebody, a friend of mine did a place down in Virginia called OMA Grill. They ran out of primer. So underneath the bar, they just used regular old fresh start primer, plastered everything that nobody would notice or to get away with it. And every time somebody sat at the bar and their feet bumped that wall, the plaster came off in giant chunks. So yes, quartz primer all the time. Plus, if you don't do it and something goes wrong, the manufacturer is not going to stand behind it. So wet to dry, see that pulling down. Thing. Don't put it on real thick. If you put it on too thick, it's going to get micro cracking. Spider webbing, you don't want that. That's going to be bad for your finish. If you want it to crack, that's a whole different beast. You're going to use a uh, crackle medium that's designed to work within the plaster. Now, tonight we're just going to do one coat, one color, or one color, I should say. You're not going to get too crazy. You can layer colors. When we get done, I'll show you a bunch of sample boards where I've taken it, manipulated it to like polished marble. You can blend colors, layer colors. Right. That's it for that. Now, the biggest thing when you're doing this, if you leave trial marks and texture, that's going to telegraph through. So every time you leave something that pushes through, this plaster goes on paper thin. Um, and I don't have a finished board right here, but you'll see as we go. So if you meaning if you leave a ridge, you put that on there, and the next layer, you're going to see that poke through. Uh, don't want any of that. So let's do this. That one's wet. Here's the next step in the process. I did this one earlier, one coat. See the difference in color? But you can see where I... We start to, it's actually started to burnish as it went on. That's getting way ahead of ourselves. But yeah, see that difference? But look at that, all right? So that's where we are so far. Looks pretty busy as we get fit going, or looks textured as we continue along in this process. It's gonna look even more textured, but have zero texture to it. All right, let's set this off to the side. So we need to wait 100%, <laughs> we need to let that dry 100%. Um, or if you get into it and it's not dry, what's going to happen is that you'll, it'll form skin over top of the plaster. And as you work over top of it, that skin will then lift, peel, pull, and it's gonna ruin your finish. So you really don't have the ability to go back and fix it to make it look, um, uniform. It's going to be like touching up a pair of sunglasses. You're going to see the spot, all right? So that's dry. We're going to clean the edge of the trial just because that little time frame. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> all right. And that little time frame, this will dry. And the dry time will depend on temperature and humidity. So I always say come back the next day. Don't push it. All right. Second coat. Same thing. Same color. I actually have this left. This is uh, from a room in my house. So we're gonna come across. All right, but that's my ceiling. Start my ceiling first. Don't go all the way along the line of your ceiling. Work in like three foot by three foot or four foot by four foot area. Same thing down the corner. And then you come back and work your field. This plaster covers one gallon, two coat application, believe it or not, you should get about 300 square feet per gallon. So it goes really far. So when you see the prices of these things, don't freak out because it's not like paint at all. Plus the fact that it had to come all the way across the ocean to get here so we could use it. 
And the biggest thing about plasters is they're not all the same. Just because it says Venetian plaster doesn't mean, well, Venetian is slang for Venice, or not slang, but Venice. So when you go to the local paint store, big box store, and you buy that plaster, you think you're gonna get these same results. It's not gonna happen. That's an acrylic product. And it will not look anything like this. That doesn't mean they're bad, it just means that they're not the same. You can get really pretty effects in the, out of those, but not the same. It's not the real thing. And after this is over, we'll make sure we put uh, links so you can purchase all these things down in the description area. All right. See the difference in that color, though? And when you do wax it, burnish it, and then wax, it will switch in that color up. So it almost goes back to the color that it is now. Close, but not exactly. So that's that part of the step. It's really quite simple. Well, after a while. See that? See that? Smooth. Alright. Smooth. This fault from looks two gallons for 80 square feet. From looks two gallons for 80 square feet. You've got plenty. So this one is from earlier to get us where we are. That way you don't have to sit here and watch paint dry. Now, so this would be my third, one, two, third, three, uh, the burnish coat. So we're going to put this on tight. We're going to put it on, pull it tight. And then while it's in that damp state, humid state, like my friend Pierre always said, in love when the plaster is still talking to itself and everything works a lot nicely, you can get in there and burnish it and get that beautiful gloss that you're looking for. And what's nice is as you do this, the plaster goes on smoother. It likes to stick to itself better than anything else. It just gets smoother and slicker as I put it on. You can put on as many coats as you want. It's up to you. I never had a, but after a while, you doesn't really do any good. Somebody like you're trying to even out an imperfect a wall with imperfections. Lay down two coats of Marmarino, uh, which is another product. But if you have a really good smooth wall, you shouldn't have to do it. But I always do it anyway because I just it gives it a much nicer look. But means your hands on that wall. I don't know how I get it right there. It drives me nuts. gathering up any odds and ends. Sorry, I put the top of my head in there for you. So yeah, any odds and ends, I'm just gathering that up, meaning any loose plaster. So I'm gonna continue all the way across the wall. Big walls, I'll have a helper with me. Because you have to. Whoops, <laughs> I didn't realize that was gonna shake that, I'm sorry. All right, so this has to dry a little bit more. See, like, this is what we're looking for. That's the color. So we don't have anything that's dry from earlier yet. Well, here's completely dry. There's humid, there's wet. So if I try to go into the, this right now, it's going to pull that plaster up uh, and make a mess. What is this, uh, Chris? What was that? I've seen people using multiple colors on the same trial, but what happens if your first coat was different color than the second coat, different as well? Um, you get a layered look as long as the colors work properly, meaning they have to work together. But yeah, you will get a layered look. You don't really get a blended look, but I know what you're talking about. I've seen some people do that too, where they put color here, color here. 
it gets muddy. If you're not careful, it doesn't get you don't get the desired effect. All right, so now I've cleaned the edge of my blade. See that? I know this is here. Got to be careful because if this gets into this, it's going to scratch it. We got a big mess on our hands. So light pressure. If I start to feel resistance, I'm going to stop instantly because that means the plaster is not ready. I'm going to start on this little corner so you kind of get the vibe. See it? What's happening? It's coming to life, getting all that movement. See, that's the corner I'm burnishing. You can already see the sheen on there, right? Now let's turn it sideways. Look at that. Nothing. Oh, look at that. There's a little bit down there. That's just from applying it. All right. Let's see. Clean trial. Let's get back to it. And the angle of the blade burnish is about two fingers up, so that's probably what, 25, 30 degrees, something like that, and start soft. Basically, I want to make sure that the bevel in this trial is what I'm working to polish it, or I'm sorry, burnish it. And you can use two hands, it's not a big deal. The only thing I'm, you know, I'm making sure that uh, I just have good contact all the way across. Now see, that's almost too dry up there. We have the resistance, listen. So that's the problem, I didn't pay attention. It got away from me. It's gonna have a different look when I burnish it. I'm gonna go two different directions. You can always go any which way. Don't just keep hitting it one direction. You do wanna go different ways. That way you catch different things, different angles of it. Yeah, that got away. Nothing I can do to get that back. I could hydrate it. Gotta be, that's not true. I can hydrate it with some water, but you gotta be super careful, use distilled water, or else it'll leave water spots. Tap water is gonna leave spots. Let's see what we got. So there it is. As it dries, this will go away and even out because now it looks super busy. We don't want that. But let's see if you can see my face. Try it this way. There it is. Look at that shine. All right. Now, this has to dry 100%. Tonight, it's, it's pretty warm in here, so it'll dry pretty quickly. So, we're going to move on and talk about the next couple things in this process which would be, you can either leave it alone, varnish, let it dry, and have a nice, soft, it'll be shiny, highly reflective, but it's not protected. Like I said, if you splash water against it, it'll come off, it'll drip off. But it's gonna be water spots. And you don't want that. Or maybe you do. Um, it's up to you. You're in control of this whole thing. I like to protect it. Now they do make acrylic products that you can use to seal this if you want a flat or a satin. Problem is they have a plasticky look to them. It takes away from the beauty of it. So if we're gonna get to the wax, which is the poly Italian polishing wax. Yeah, this was out in the sun in the back of the truck so you can't even see the label anymore. Good thing I know what it is. That's when everybody yells at me. Bring me a can of polishing wax. I don't know which one it is. But, so this is a, this is again, Fermilux product. Staying all in the Fermilux system. And somebody tinted this can. So we can't use that. That is brown. Who would have done that? Give me a second to go get it a fresh can. I should have put up and checked it a minute ago. There you go, let's see. Let's match the wax. 
Again, interior, exterior. Oh, this is brand new. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. Gotta love that. That way you know nothing's gonna get into it. Oh man, it's one of these. I might not get this can open very quickly. It's going to take a minute or two. Because they do a better job of... Uh... That came right open. Check it out. That's the wax straight out of the can. Crystal clear. Has a milky appearance. We'll dry it crystal clear. What did somebody ask? Sorry. I want to see you do three different colors, one only because you can pull it off. <laughs> all right, I'll do that next week. Um, all right, back to the wax. All right, so this has to dry 100% before you put the wax on. If it does not dry 100%, you will seal the moisture in the surface, not permanently, but it will stay in there, and it's going to take longer for it to dry. So that means it's going to turn a little cloudy and gray. When you apply the wax, the wax will turn cloudy and gray. Or you're going to see darker spots like this locked in and that's going to be trouble because the moisture is going to take even longer to get out of the plaster so take your time let it dry completely overnight before you get into it the wax all right there's so many things you can do with wax it's ridiculous uh it can drive you you can maddening because i can take the clear wax do a clear wax treatment i can put mica powders into it if i want gold wax and when i say gold these are just Four varieties of the gold mica that I have. So you got, you know, micro gold, sunset gold, Aztec gold, old gold. Oh, God, there's so many. So you can really punch it up and take it to different, do different things with it. Um, I'm probably going to wax right over this because we're not going to sit here for the next four or five hours and uh, watch it. So, so back to the wax. Wax is clear out of the bucket. Um, it takes paint thinner to clean this up. So you have to clean your tools up with paint thinner. Um, let's see, what else? You can tint it using pigment. It will take color. Um, I've done some really cool things where I've done textured reds and I've tinted my wax black to give it that really old, actually not black, but burnt umber. But anyway, you can tint it with pigment. And uh, I always use Mixols. Let's see about there. And then the red cap means it's oxide safe or lime stable. All right, um, but the other thing too is, oh yeah, or you can use Degusa 944 series. There's all kinds of different pigments out there, but you've got to be careful. Pigments from the paint store will not work in this product. It will not, and that what could happen is uh, you put it on, put it out in the sun, or just put it on the wall. The lime is going to attack it, attack the pigment, and your color is going to be obliterated. It's just going to be gone. I lost my trial, and I'm only raising it. Okay, let's clean my trowel before we move on. So, oh, and it's kind of like even with a job. Keep, I always have a bucket in the room with a scrub brush, cleaning your tools as you go. And depending on how big the, wall, the room or wall is, I might have a helper. I always have a helper. Been with me 17 years. Um, I'll have a couple trials handy and let him just throw me a new trial or hand me a new trial and we won't just keep working and the one thing you never want to do is do not touch the edge of this trial this will go through your finger like that we were doing a work with this workshop I know we did a trade show in Baltimore years ago and the guy was looking at the trials and we had the protective guards on. We're like, don't touch the edges. Oh, I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, whatever. What's he do? Takes his hand. Whoosh, three stitches later. All right. Jumped out of my little guy. Put just a little bit back. Like I said, I have to wax over the stamp board. I just didn't make another one today. A little bit. A little bit of wax goes a long ways. A gallon can do about 800 square feet. I uh, put it on just the same way as my plaster. I don't wax 
I don't apply it with a rag. I can't stand that a lot of times because all that does is pile the wax on. You use a lot of wax because the rag gets saturated with wax, and what do you do? You're buying wax. But it has more of a plastic feel to it. Same way as applying the plaster. Trial's almost flat. It's sliding off. Up on the edge a little bit to, to remove any excess. Let's see, look, that's 100% dry. Let's get down here a little farther. You can clearly see how it darkens it up. Now, and that's because it's putting a lot of moisture into the plaster. It has to dry, and I just flicked water on it. Um, as it dries, the moisture dissipates, because, you know, and just has that beautiful look to it. Like I said, you don't have to wax. But see, that's happening to my wax. You see it's grabbing the color. But if you put too much wax on, you're just like chasing wax all day long around this wall. Now, on a big wall, I will use my electric buffer with I use a synthetic lens wool pad, and I use three different pads for various reasons. One is like a cut, meaning the more aggressive pad. And it just knocks the wax down, it buffs it out, and then I'll slowly bring it up with the other pads. It gives it a higher and higher sheen as I go. Alright, put that in the trash can. That has to firm up before we can do anything or dry. Now, you don't want it to dry overnight. If it dries overnight, it's going to get too hard. And then you're not going to you're going to have a hard time polishing it out. So you touch it. If you get resistance, I hit it here. I don't know if you can see that. That's dry. But down here it's still too just a little too damp. So if you use it by hand, always use lint-free color free um, lint free color free rag sorry something going on here what do you use for sample boards uh, normally for a line based product I will use masonite which you can get from any of the big box store any lumber yards I'll use the eighth inch stick they will cut it for you, but I didn't have any laying around and I want to use up these old boards. This is just uh, polystyrene, but this will not last. So if I take this once it's dry and bend it, the plaster's is going to fly everywhere. This is a cotton waste. This stuff is fantastic and fairly inexpensive. It's not completely dry, but you can already start to see. Showing up? Yeah, it's showing up. Nice. Circle, circle, circle. If you go back and forth or up and down, you tend to burn it and you'll see the pattern. The, and the nice thing about the cotton waste, it's super soft. So if you use a t shirt with a texture in it, it'll scratch it. You can see that. Let's just stop there so we can see the difference between the top and the bottom. See that? My orange peel wall, do I skim out the orange peel with basic joint compound then quartz it? Yes. See that showing? And that was just that quick. Like if I let that sit overnight and I hit that with my buffer, now if you use a car buffer, a big buffer, be careful. You make sure it's uh, that can burn through the wax really fast and mess up your plaster. Don't try it your first time out. Set up a big sample somewhere and try it there. Still a little soft down here. 
but like a t-shirt like this because it's solvent based wax you put this on here it can pull the dyes out of this and mess up your product or your finish Now, it's going to lighten up probably another, this is, this is dry, that's where it's going to end up tomorrow, tonight, this is really too dark, rich, it's blotchy looking, it's just because it's damp and I did wax over it and I shouldn't have, in the real world you don't do that, but man, there you go, now, that could be it, that could be finished, but we might mix up some gold wax. Look at that. Now, if you spill something on it, some wine, some grape juice, or anything like that, it's going to repel. It's going to run right off. And everybody's like, oh, do I have to re-wax my walls every few years? No. You don't. I've had it in my house that I'm in right now. One wall, 16 years. It looks just as good as a day. <laughs> I think we don't have that kind of time to wait until it's 100%. But next time, I'll make another board that's ready to go in that process. Or that stage of the process. Um, oh, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, let's play with some wax. And this can get nuts. Oh, back up. I think we talked about it. you do not have to re wax. Now, um, I am noticing in my house, um, it's maybe time just to run the buffer over it because it's a little, it hasn't it dulled down a little bit. But well, what's crazy is when you go in there, you actually see the dust hanging on the wall. So you have to dust your wall because it's really apparent. I mean, you see it. The wall's gorgeous. Remember when uh, that little dog Walter would sit on the bed and just stare at himself and see his reflection in it. So if we want to make some mica powder or make gold wax, one is you always want to measure out what you're doing. When I make my waxes, and hold on a second. I use this guy, all right? This is an electric oops, gram scale. So I can measure it out by weight. So meaning, I'll take whatever I need for the room. If I need a quart or a gallon, I will take the wax, put it on the scale, get the weight of it, then I mark it down, zero it out, and then I will start adding my mica powder, and I will see the increments that I add and when I make my sample, I have my measurement, and I can always remake it later. This thing is ridiculously um, accurate. Love it. The wax, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to bounce the camera. The wax is from Firmolux. Firmo Lux. Um, it is their Italian polishing wax. Um, again, once this is all done, I'll put all the links to everything down below in the comment section. So if you want to buy it, you just buy it directly. You don't have to do all this hunting. I have my face all washed out. Sorry. Ugh. <laughs> That's terrible. Whatever. All right. All right. Um, where were we? So yeah, let's play some with some wax. Play with some wax. So, and to give you an idea, if you can see that little, can you see that tiny divot in there? Look at that. That's all it took to do that little sample, and I even threw some away because it wasn't. Uh, it was more than enough. So, I'm gonna take. And get a little bit of wax and put it in a container. Now you gotta be super careful on hot days, that wax will soften up. Some guys, uh, some companies make a liquid wax. That's pretty cool too. You can put it on with a flat sponge. That's a whole other thing. Let's play with micro gold. So I get these from, where is it? Sep Leaf. This is the it's really good. There's so many choices of mica powder, it gets crazy. Like if you went over and saw the cabinet where we keep the micas, it'll blow your mind because I have Sep Leaf in there. I have, uh, there's three different companies I get stuff from. And I even have blues, purples, greens. I have that, uh, oh, what is it called? Chameleon additive. So you ever see this car that when they drive down the road, the colors change? I have that product that I put into the wax so I get that effect. And it's cool. Because as you move around the wall, it changes colors. So 
So put it in here, uh, stir it. Usually you want to mix your wax for a while. Actually, when I make it, I'll mix my wax, my powder into my wax. I'll let it set overnight and come back and stir it up again because the mica does tend to soften up and break down just a little bit and disperse better into the product. Oh, and back to the plaster. <clears throat> when I do the plaster finishes, even when they send it to me tinted, we mix that stuff up every day. All right. You see that? There's so much light, sorry. That's the gold. Yeah, it's blowing it out, you can't tell. All right, so, clean trial. You want the top like that? There, you can see, kind of see the gold. Now you can really see the gold. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is trial it on, and we'll come back with a soft rag and clean it up. Now, the thing about wax, it can make a good plaster job look terrible because it'll show every imperfection that you have. Because it didn't pop down in any and every little spot. Oh. So before it sets up, I'm going to come in here. Because I got a couple scratches on here. That trowel has a scratch on it. I didn't see it. But that wax sure brought it out. Now I'll go back over it. I was pulling it out. Some of the wax is so strong. It was getting in those crevices and I wanted to catch it before it really set up. crazy because it can get too much. It can be too much, but mm. maybe I got a trial that's worthless now. Bummer. So I always keep your trial storm with the guards on the edge. of the time it never sticks that good to the surface. I've also had this trial. This trial's probably going on at least 10 years old. So yeah, she's definitely gave me some money. See how that plaster just blowing off there like that? It's because it's it's hard as a rock. The longer this sits, the harder this is gonna get. It'll actually turn back into a stone. We can talk about that one another time because it's kind of boring. <laughs> Alright, look at that. See the hints of gold in there? See that scratch? Arrgh. That's why I always make a sample before you start the actual wall. Because I'm not running my finger down the edge of my trowel, because if I do, I'm going to slice my finger. So when you make a quick sample, you can check, make sure your blade's in good shape. You can even hit it with some 400 soft paper, sandpaper. Look. Hints of gold. Look at that. That's it. That's really it. 
but this is styrene. So once it's as hard as a rock, if I do this, plaster goes flying. So that's it. That's pretty much it. Not pretty much. That's it. All right. So yeah, that's the Fermilux Grisello. Now the thing is uh, about these plasters. There's so many of them out there because it's a very popular. It's a popular finish. It's been around for centuries. Um, they're not all created equally. So this is what we considered a filtered, meaning this has been filtered. There's no aggregate in it. It's smooth as peanut butter, and of course it's lime-based. That being said, uh, cover your eyes when you mix it. Make sure you don't let it sit on your hands too long because it'll burn. What else? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good product, too. I've used Nassari in the past. Um, I think it's a West Coast product, or more readily available on the West Coast. I've used all kinds. I mean, it's La Col Colchie de Renta, Spatula Stewie, Rivido. Uh, oh. There's so many out there. Um, but then you get to a certain level, some are just better than others. And a lot of that has to do with um, when they take the lime, they heat the lime, the temperature to heat the lime, the hotter they get to get the lime, they can crush it to a smaller granular. So then sometimes those, some, when the granular, some, oh, <laughs> come on, I'm think. When a granule gets crushed down, and sometimes they'll double crush it, triple crush it, uh, it gets smaller and smaller. So when you go to burnish or put it on, it's easier to work. So when, they, these, when they're just mass produced and kicked out, you can see that in the price point a lot of times. But less expensive plasters are going to have a heavier, larger granular. And they're not going to look the same. Um, and it'll go on the wall a lot thicker, too. Right? Yes, it goes on the wall thicker. That's what you see with the synthetics. The synthetics go on the wall very thick because uh, it's just the nature of the beast. What else? That's it. Boom. Formalux Grisella Plaster. All right. I'm, uh, that's it for tonight. I'll see you next Monday at 8 p.m. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach uh, decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for people all around the world. Um, thanks for watching. See you guys.